in the house of the Lord. Amen. Than anywhere to be. Amen. Thank you for this opportunity to be sharing word of God with you. And I am free of nervousness. <laughs> and <laughs> standing here, I am just going with the ladies meeting full Malayalam message. And after a long time, <laughs> coming back to English message. Uh, it's my family, my parents and my sisters and brothers. So I am comfortable. Uh, let's submit to God and uh, thank God for the uh, message we heard, hallelujah, Ananias, that lost everything spiritually, lost his life. And there is another Ananias in chapter 9 who is, who is able to pray and, you know, he is interceding and following Christ so intensely, so sincerely that when he prays, the persecutor turns into propagator. And he was able to, the Paul was able to convert at the gate of Damascus. And Ananias was able to go and pray and able to, I mean, open the eyes of Paul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This evening, Amen, Jesus. We are a praying church. We are a praying church. Hallelujah. Amen. When we pray, when we intercede, when we stand in the gap, many people's eyes is going to open. Hallelujah. How many of you believe with me this evening? Hallelujah. When some with the same name losing everything, but those who pray, those who sincerely follow God, those who filled with the sincere love of God can change this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many people into God's kingdom can change the atmosphere of a city. Hallelujah. Amen. We can make an impact for the name of God. Hallelujah. How many of you believe? Hallelujah. Let's worship him. Hallelujah. He's a good, good father. He's a good, good. Hallelujah. Our Lord, Savior. He's always good. Hallelujah. It all matters whether we remain faithful in his presence. Hallelujah. If you are discouraged this evening, I want to tell you this evening. Hallelujah. Let us come to the God. He is always faithful. He is always next to each one of us in our brokenness. He is not going to leave us. Hallelujah. In our hallelujah failures, He is not going to leave us. Hallelujah. Urabalaba Shandara. Hallelujah. Urabha Shandare. Hallelujah. Receive this word. Hallelujah. Many years you have prayed. Hallelujah. We have prayed. Hallelujah. We are going to reap that harvest in the days to come. Hallelujah. Urabha. Shandara, hallelujah. Let's once again, hallelujah, submit and believe, hallelujah. Every tears we have, hallelujah, spent in the presence of God, it's not going to go in vain, hallelujah. Believe with me, believe with me. Urabalava Shandara, Dira. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Rudava Shandara. Enemy cannot hold people back. Hallelujah. They will be, hallelujah, the beloved. Hallelujah. If the, hallelujah, they belong to God. Hallelujah. They will be set free. Hallelujah. Only thing we need to intercede with faith. Hallelujah. This evening, hallelujah, whatever you are praying, we should not give up our hope. Hallelujah. How many days it delayed? Hallelujah. Every hallelujah, fair, uh, the powers of, uh, you know, hallelujah, darkness can obstruct it for days but God is going to come forth in our life hallelujah let us believe that and hallelujah have a amen surrender to God's presence hallelujah amen yesterday uh, we all heard a, a very uh, message convicting message that our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit and uh, we need to not destroy it or you know Keep it clean and thing. And, uh, you know, he was sharing about Tambi's heart. It's like brothers. Hallelujah. Each one of us have a heart. And we need to put out everything. And Bible says when you put out everything and it is clean, it will go back and find no rest and come back with the seven. So we need to fill our heart today with God's love, God's presence and Holy Spirit so that we can be, you know, used for the kingdom of God and uh, in the days to come. And I also want to... Uh, as uh, last week, uh, Justin brother was sharing from learning from Christ. Um, and I think it is, uh, has a potential to have a series of learning from Christ uh, messages. Today, I was, I was preparing a message on love. And I was uh, planning to change that. And I prepared another message. But God brought me back to this message. I mean, the God who poured himself out 
that is the pure love we saw what is love because of him because of jesus and today i am going to speak about god's love that is agape love let's for today's meditation let's read first corinthian chapter 13 verse 13 it is the love chapter in the uh, bible and it is the last verse that says amen hallelujah let's all turn to that and uh, uh, words uh, chapter 14 words 1 also we'll read it together if you just don't have bible you can look it up amen and now remain faith hope love these three but the greatest of these is love 14:1 pursue love ageyal vishwasam pratyasha sneham ee moonu nela nilkunu ivayil veliyada sneham thanne sneham aajaripan ulsahipin amen hallelujah i don't know i am worthy to preach this message but i am humbling myself in the presence of god because god uh, very forced me to speak this message so i am speaking amen the agape love is the unconditional love of god and um, the love agape love is reciprocal when god loves us unconditionally we also love him unconditionally that is agape love both ways when human love god and god loves us that becomes unconditional love uh, that is called agape love and uh, when we look at this words faith hope love these three remain uh, this message because we were talking in nehemiah prayer about faith we were like enjoying about faith and I, when i come to read this i saw there is love and greatest of this is love hallelujah we have faith right uh, we unless we have faith without faith we cannot please god we cannot you know every righteous man shall live by faith so without faith we cannot uh, live as uh, our name itself is like you know a believer so we need to have faith from the beginning from salvation to our till the end we need to hold on to the faith and we need to hold on to the hope amen hallelujah and love of god and then only greatest of these things are love hallelujah you may be thinking what is this mean love is a greatest thing and faith is secondary like everything is we thought faith was the greatest thing but now it says greatest of these is love and next word 14 chapter 1 says pursue love hallelujah we may be pursuing many things in our life but it says pursue love we really want to we may be pursuing many things we our career our education you know our children's uh, future so many things we may be uh, pursuing in our life but here it says pursue love bible says to pursue peace many times in the bible but i am not going into the references and all second timothy chapter 2 verse 22 says flee from youthful lust but pursue righteousness faith love peace with those who call on the lord out of pure heart amen hallelujah we need to pursue righteousness we serve a righteous god so we need to um, pursue righteousness and faith love peace unless we do that to our those who believe and call on the god god's name we cannot move forward right so that is the greatest advice in our life many things we can pursue we can pursue money our job our power many things people are pursuing even in churches people are pursuing for power and uh, you know famous to become famous they are doing so, so many things uh, some people are just going and i just want to become famous that's all they are pursuing or american dream we we are pursuing but god the word of god says we have to pursue love and when when we look at this cross what comes to your heart when you look at a cross talk to me so that i can take a break <laughs> what comes to your heart when you look at a old rugged cross it is used to hang the criminals right yeah it hangs the criminals and the people may think oh it is a cross of shame and punishment hate when people are sinful they are hanged on this and their death it reminds of death but jesus christ changed it all hallelujah for each one of us when we think of cross we think of love 
that unconditional love of god poured on the calvary hallelujah our life changed he gave a new meaning when we see the cross we can think of hope and provision of god healing of god how many things through that cross we can have a hope for eternity it talks lot about for us we close our eyes and we meditate that when we come to the foot of the cross there is so much peace there is a relationship i mean there is a love in that cross at the foot of cross amen hallelujah he changed it when we come our hearts are changed and we can change this world we can change many people for we change and we change many people just like christ changed that face of that cross we also when the god's love flow into our life we can change others life hallelujah we know that there is a greatest uh, commandment right old testament there was lot of laws our 610 commandments and everything but when we come to the new testament there is only two um if one of you can read marks chapter 12 words 28 to 31 it's very familiar but once again let's look at it then one of the scribes came and having heard them reading together perceiving that he had answered them well asked him which is the first commandment of all and jesus answered him the first of all the commandments is hear o israel the lord our god the lord is one and you shall love the lord your god with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength this is the first commandment and the second like it is this you shall love your neighbor as yourself there is no other commandment greater than these amen very familiar what is the first commandment the scribe who writes day and night scripture he is asking which is the greatest commandment amen they may be writing but they don't have the spirit to understand and when they came and asked god told love your lord with all your heart with all your soul and with all your mind and strength it's nothing new to us right amen so many times we have seen that the love of god how to love god without boundaries love with all your strength i don't know whether i am doing that each one of us has to examine am i loving god more than anything in this world i mean is many things in this world is distracting me to you know taking me away from the love of god it may be your education or whatever you are uh, you know loving maybe things of this world that gives you pleasure whatever it is we need to examine am i loving obeying this command and the second is like it like it's there is no difference there is no second part to it but it is equal as important as you love god it's important to love your neighbor as yourself how much we love ourselves we cannot imagine how much we love ourselves how much we love our family our children we become so selfish but when we come to christ at the foot of cross that's going to change hallelujah sometime i feel that we were doing all this and slowly because of our you know long journey we are you know in the wilderness we are journeying and so many things come in our lives and we become selfish the covid made more selfish in our life before we were rather more uh, open and socializing now it's we are so comfortable in our own territory that our home are become everybody pulled in that we, it's so difficult to come out now and so if it is a command and i want to ask you a question if, if the bible says repent unless you repent you will never inherit the kingdom of god that is a command as equal as this this command also so should we give less importance you know that unless we repent of our sin we'll never get to heaven so this command also says it's a commandment that's told by jesus and uh, he he is telling that we have to love our god with all our heart and our neighbor so how many times we have failed in our in our life we can say that no i have loved but how god is expecting how holy spirit is leading so many times we have closed because past days and months we have hurt sometime we helped somebody or something happened in our life and we built this walls around us and then we cannot love as we loved before 
or we build wall, our previous experience will guide us to the present situation. And so there is in John chapter 13, 14, it says, I'll, a new commandment I'll give you that you love one another as I have loved you. You also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples. If we want to be a disciple, we need to love. Love God. Love one another. Unless we do that, that is the only thing we are losing day by day. Our love is decreasing. And our love, because of our I mean, a busy life and you know, very fast life, we, we don't think of many things in our life and we go, go about our life and our business because we are so independent. Sometimes we don't even depend on God uh, and we move on. But let's come back to that. Hallelujah. Unless we want to be a disciple of Christ, follow Christ, we need to love one another. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, so, you know, in heaven, um, in eternity, God was there. I just want to read this First John uh, chapter 4, 7, 8, and 16. Can you read? First John. You have it? Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Verse 16, and we have known and believed the love that God has for us, because God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God, and God in him. Amen. Hallelujah. So we know that if there is one nickname for God, it would be, you know, Kerala people are very good at keeping nicknames. I may have some nicknames I will not know, but everybody else will know. <laughs> that is the first thing I realize when I come, uh, like they keep names for everybody. But if God has a nickname, that would be love, right? God is love. Love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God. If we don't have love, we don't have God in our life. And he who does not love God does not know God. God is love. And we know that we have known the love of God because he, we have uh, God is love and he abides in him. Like if we abide in love, we abide in God. How? If we don't have love, you know, you may say that I have... You know, certain people I have love. I love my family. I have, you know, my friends I love, but I cannot love anybody outside that. Or I build a wall for certain people and I have uh, specific, uh, you know, um, other people. Like, you know, uh, some people we don't talk or something. And then some people we talk with them and we have things. So we think that it is okay to do that, that we cannot, we can build wall for few people and we can go on with our life. But God, God did not love a specific group of people or anything. He loved the whole world. That's what John 3.16 says. He loved the whole world. That's why he gave, gave up his only son. Amen. This evening, I'm not, you know, standing here for a revival message, but I want to just think, where are we in, God, in love? Hallelujah. In God's love, that agape love, is it flowing in us? Is, it, is Jesus inside us? Laodicean church, they, Jesus was outside. He was knocking at their church. They, he was outside because of their acts or deeds. He was not there. Sometimes in our hearts, Jesus might have left. We may not understand whether he is in our heart or no. So let us, let us just examine today that whether God's love is really in me and I'm, am I gone away? Am I not loving everyone equally? And am I, am I trying? We cannot love everybody, but can, do I try to make that relationship go up in my life? Let us think that and uh, let us come to the, uh, when, you know, in eternity, God was, he, he's an eternal God. So he was beginning, he was end. And uh, this words in John 5, 17 to 23, he's, uh, just I want to read, uh, my father has been working until now. I have been working. Therefore, 
the jews were very offended that my father was working until now i have been working it's like a present continuous so the jews were comparing that he was telling he god is his father they got angry with him and uh, they were like you know um, so angry but jesus trying to explain to them them they saying son can do nothing of himself but what he sees the father do for whatever he does the son also does like manna father loves the son shows him all things that he himself does he will show him greater works than this that you may marvel father raises the dead gives life to them even so the son gives life to whom he will he will the father judges no one he committed all judgment to son so in eternity father son and holy spirit god the father god the son god the holy spirit three were having a love fest imagine he saying father loves me so many times in the new testament jesus proclaimed again and again my father loves me and i am loved by him and i love the father i will not do anything without father telling me and uh, he also said that whatever he does greater glory he want to show the love to the son so he will do so many things he created things for him and he, the son will to glorify the father he will perform the miracles like that he father is raising the dead from the dead the son also does that so so much mutuality and love between them they loved each other then the holy spirit comes into picture in the from creation genesis to revelation we see how holy spirit the god head all in three in one moving together in love in john chapter 17 it says as they are one they would like us to be one in christ he was jesus was praying the final prayer and that was the prayer as we are one and let my children be one let's not fight each other or come to an you know you know dissensions and anything the enemy is very strong you know i was friendly with the, one of the sisters for many years like i invested and she invested in me for one small reason the devil brought one silly reasons uh, brought between us and uh, we we became like uh, separated for a uh, thing and it hurts when the close people or your family member hurts you it hurts more and we think that um, we cannot go on right but if we know that the enemy is the one who cause is not that sister or brother we need to put out the enemy not the person who is taken over by that right so we need to overcome that and move on when people hurt we need we should be able to go back and build up that relationship again we should not give victory to the enemy but we should take victory because we we have a loving god he has forgiven so many millions of sins that we have made in a day how many sins we made and go back and ask him forgiveness when he is so generous how we can be so constricted right and uh, we know that the parable jesus told when there was uh, one person who forgave the king forgave the other person did not forgive and he we lost everything when we become unforgive unforgive people unforgiveness people then we cannot get forgiveness from god so let us let us let us once again surrender and ask is we are giving space to the enemy and not for the love of god in our life when are we are build, trying to build our walls in our life hallelujah and uh, i want to read first john chapter 4 verse 9 to 11 amen hallelujah amen god has manifested love towards us by giving his only son i may be telling a 2000 years story and you may be getting bored but this is love that he that not that we loved god he loved us wherever we are i was in a small village in karnataka 
the love of God came searching for me. And God sent, hallelujah, someone to share the gospel with me. Each one of you was in that stage, hallelujah. But the love of God came searching for each one of us, hallelujah. And how can we not have that love towards other people around us, hallelujah. When our family, maybe your parents, in your siblings, whatever it is, we need to um, flow that love. If the enemy has taken that, block that once again, let us come back to God and ask him to uh, pour out that love once again in our life. That first love that God poured, let it pour out once again in our life so that we can love once again after the hurt, after the brokenness, we can go back and love our fellows, uh, fellow believers. That's why in 1 John chapter 3, verse 1, it says, Behold, what manner of love he has shown us. He made us children. How we were not worthy when he came to the Jewish people, Israel people. But when they rejected, we got, he chose us, right? So how blessed we are. If we go back to our grandparents or some generation back, they were all idol worshipping, right? They were all caught in the traditional worship and they did not know God but God in his time separated each one of us to bring bring this love towards us so what it means what is the importance of this love in first John chapter 3 verse 10 to 12 it says in this the children of Um, in this, the children of God, the Amen. Hallelujah. Is this, in this, children of God and the children of devil are manifest. So, the love decides whether we are children of God or children of the devil. I am not saying, Bible is saying that. In 1 John 3.10. So, if we don't have love and we say, I, do, I cannot forgive this and I cannot love this brother again. I don't want to look at this sister's face. And you say, I am a child of God. <laughs> Hallelujah, glory. <laughs> we are not going anywhere. It says, in this, the children of God and the children of devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. For this message you have heard from the beginning. Amen. We should love one another. Cain was wicked and he was a murderer, murdered his brother. Why did he murder him? It says, because of his work were evil and his brothers were righteous. We know that his work was evil, right? He was jealousy and he went and killed uh, his brother. And what is the work that he did? He just had jealousy. He could not control that. He acted upon that. So many times in our life, when un unforgiveness in our life, we go and, you know, talk about others. We are all equally guilty of that. And we kill people in different way. And we destroy their re reputation. And with jealousy and things, we, you know, we build ourselves we cannot move forward in the love of God. So what Israel children did was, you know, in the desert, they murmured, they complained. They created so many havocs in their life. They were disobedient. They were, God says 40 years, he provided everything for them. They didn't lack anything. But God says, I was not pleased with any of them. And you know, everyone perished except below 20 years old people and they were rounding in the mountain because of their disobedience and behavior. God was taking them in the long way and he says it, so it was only taking like 11 days to 40 days to cross that wilderness to Canaan but they took 40 years. Sometime if we are unforgiving and we are not able to forget, we are not able to flow in the love of God or we are not able to obedient to the God's voice. We may be rounding around the mountains in our life. 
many years. Maybe this evening you may be thinking, what is wrong? I am praying and nothing is happening. So many things in, in your life is blocked and you think there is a wall before you and nowhere you are going. You are trying hard. You are praying and you are seeking God. Once again, this evening, I want to tell you this evening, what whatever it is, hallelujah. Once again, let uh, each one of us surrender to God's presence and ask, God, I want you to lead me. I want to hear your voice and I want to surrender to the Holy Spirit and move with your love forward. Hallelujah. Why it's all written in the Bible? Because it will be an admonition or a warning to us. What Israel people did, they never been thankful to God and they, they keep on complaining or they were so impatient. When there was no water, they could not wait and they should, they will always reject God and go behind the idol worshipping and all. Many times in our life also we may be doing a lot of things that uh, displease to God. Let us come back once again and check ourselves how we are, life is going forward. And I want to read uh, from 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 1 as it says, we may have prophecy, we may be preaching, we may be mysteries of all knowledge, we, we may have all the faith that needs to move the mountains but we, if we have no love we are nothing. Amen. Hallelujah. You may have, you know, good feed the poor. And though body is burned, but we don't have love, we profit nothing. We are doing so many things for God. Maybe we should have a foundation of love. Everything should come out of love for people. Whatever we do, if we are doing for our name or, you know, for money or different things, maybe to build our own kingdom, we are collecting people, you know, and then all that we are doing, it is nothing. It comes to nothing. This evening, hallelujah, once again, God is telling whatever we want to, we, we are doing if it is not out of love it's going to be waste and how we how the real love doesn't envy doesn't puffed up or behave um, you know all uh, bears uh, it is not provoked or it's not angry it's not prideful it's not selfish it is uh, you know it is always bearing all truth amen hallelujah it believes all things it hopes in all things, endures all things. Real love. When we ask God, it is not that love coming from our heart that God, we can pour out to people or do all the ministry or anything. It is, has to come from God. Amen. It's not our human love. Human love has limitation. We, our love, it will drain out, right? After some days we get fed up and it drain out. We have, every human has love, but it will drain out. But when we get from God and pour to the people. Hallelujah. That is the love Jesus showed that uh, when we get the love from God and pour out to people, it will never, it, we have, you know, we can rejoice, we can bear all things, we can endure all things, we can hope all things, we can continue to go, grow in our love. That love will never fade. Hallelujah. Amen. In First John chapter 3, verse 16 and 18, it says, we know love because he laid down his life for me, for us. Hallelujah. Amen. So we ought to lay our life for our brethren. And not only in the words or anything, with deeds, with action, we need to do. Just as we told, learn love from Jesus. Hallelujah. Learn this. He, he loved us, so he came down and he gave his life. So as we also, if we are loving, we have to come down and, you know, we have to do some deeds that comes out of love. I want to say that Sajan's bro uh, brother's brother, Korean uh, pastor, was come to my house and he was sharing the testimony how he was in a house and praying and uh, two people came to his house calling his name and he did not know who, who they were and uh, they were dirty clothes and uh, nothing. Like they were so dirty that people could not, they didn't have any food for them to eat or anything. And uh, he went and asked who you are and they were giving tracts. So somebody told like this giving tract, pastor is here. So they sent him to their house. And when he looked at them, he, they were in the dirtiest clothes. They were not worthy to come inside the house. But this pastor was fasting and praying and invited them to 
come to come inside their house and they asked when did you have last tea they told several days ago so he made nice with milk uh, tea and gave them and uh, made them have shower they gave them clothes and uh, gave them breakfast made them to lie down rest after that when they got up they gave them lunch and uh, they uh, finally they were departing and uh, they started praying for this house and husband and wife prayed for the pastor and family and they told the prophecy that your you, you god will bless you and your two children will go abroad and one child will become a um, doctor that time the pastor didn't have fees to pay pay for his son so the principal was calling him they were children small and they didn't have anything like ministry was not flourishing at that time because they did that out of that pastor when he was telling he was crying i know he would took a break to cry and then shared that experience because it comes from the god's love he did not do with his love right he did it with god's love it was poured on him and he did it and they called this family will be blessed and as they prophesied that came true in their life two children are abroad and one child became doctor what i want to say they may not have clothes to wear or anything how accurate prophecy that uh, husband and wife prophesied in this family amen hallelujah that is the love of god he believes that there was an angel maybe who, who visited their how home why i said this is whatever we do ministry when we do out of love god is going to bless hallelujah hallelujah there will be a blessing hallelujah in our life when we come to uh efficient uh, in efficient church what it says in revelation 24 because the time is going i'm quickly going to wrap up hallelujah only one thing was lacking in efficient church you know it, there was big city and they were all idol worshiping paul went and established the church and they were came to the faith and they were good at works i i know your works i know your labor i know your patience i know you can not bear the evil they rejected all kinds of evil and they have so much patience for my name sake you have uh, you you do so many things for my name sake and you are struggling and you did not go weary that means they didn't get fed up of doing work for god but still it says in the words for nevertheless i have one thing against you you have left the first love amen hallelujah there is one correction it's in the words five it says remember therefore where you have fallen repent do the first works or else i come quickly and remove the lamp stand from your place amen unless you repent so there is so many things they are doing that is a look good church right like our church we are doing so many things but if you lose first love Jesus is telling he will not be here in that church so we need to come back to that first love you know this church is so much uh, good church that even 50000s of magic books they burned when they come to faith they were going full scale and we know that once uh, the paul uh, is praying in ephesians chapter 15 to 17 i'm going to quickly wrap up he is praying that oh no whatever you are let their eyes be enlightened that they may know the purpose of their calling that is what he is praying for them because they he came to know that the past sins justin brother has spoken to us last sunday that the ephesian church how the sinful ways they were doing so he is telling they let them have their eyes may be enlightened they may be know the purpose of their calling just what is the purpose that they are chosen from before the foundations of the earth to be without blame and to be in love hallelujah that each one of us are called to be living holy and be without blame and in love are we are we continuing our life are we know the purpose that god has called each one of us and he's reminding them and praying for them let them know the privileges that we have in christ and uh, paul is uh, praying that he told in words chapter 1 verse 3 that every spiritual blessing is given to them amen how how blessed we are 
on that judgment day can we go and say i didn't have a good family i didn't have my workplace was bad that's why i was bad i could not love that person we cannot say every spiritual blessing is given to us there is no excuse that we can think we have so much privilege that god has given us holy spirit within us so that we can be victorious hallelujah not only that whatever power that is available for each one of us that is what uh, that paul was praying every time for ephesians they have to come back they have fallen from their first love and the first work they were so eager to pursue god and they went back in their faith as the time went by are we so hallelujah as the days are going by are we caught up in this american dream and dollar and we are we forgetting the god's love in our life hallelujah amen hallelujah i just want to uh, finish with this unless we 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 cannot move if we build walls around us or you know lot of restriction in our life and continue to go that way we cannot move in the love of god we we have to when we remember the enemy is making us to tie bound and not go forward in our calling each one of us are called and god has a purpose for each one of us but the enemy has tied us to different to jealousy to anger or different kinds of sin i am not going to name any of those but if we we are tied to one thing and we cannot move how can we the love of god flow through us so the God, when i was preparing uh, this message god showed me if we are driving in this fogged glass is the traveling safe no we will have accidents so unless we clear our life with love of god and we move forward we cannot be stagnant we cannot be you know staying and we our vision must and we do not care about what word of god says and we are just i am pentecostal i am anointed i am going forward if we are going without any breaks without any cleaning are we going to reach our destiny no hallelujah they cannot see any road that's what god showed me quickly stop uh, oh, sorry i took so long <laughs> and this is the second vision i had uh, our youths were playing in a lot of water and everything and last one one team uh, one one team lost but they were praying separately very united they are they are holding shoulder to shoulder very thing they nobody can separate them but they are in two teams then i was asking god why they are in two teams they have so much strength they have so much unity and we we instead of that what god expect we are one big family right we cannot separate amen hallelujah that is the devil strength for some reason the devil brings so many things that in our life and we separate and for our youths we need to pray hallelujah that they come together they stand together for that love of god will flow once again their hurts will be healed haraba shandar adhira hallelujah hallelujah can we all hallelujah one minute hallelujah take time and hold the person next to you hallelujah and pray that our vision will be cleared haraba laba shandar deiva garagalil elpikam hallelujah stotram നമ്മൾ ഹാലലുയ സ്തോത്രം ഓൾഡർ ആയിരിക്കുമ്പോൾ അമേൻ അനേക ഗ്രൂപ്പുകളായി ഡിവിഷൻ ആയി ഒക്കെ ഇരിക്കുമ്പോൾ അമേൻ ഫാമിലി ഗ്രൂപ്പ്സ് ആയിരിക്കാം അമേൻ സ്തോത്രം സ്ഥലത്തിന്റെ ഗ്രൂപ്പ് ആയിരിക്കാം എന്തൊക്കെയാണെങ്കിൽ അമേൻ സ്തോത്ര ദൈവ സഭയിൽ ഹല്ലേലുയ ദൈവ സ്നേഹത്തിൽ ഹല്ലേലുയ ദൈവത്തിന്റെ ദർശനത്തിലേക്ക് ഒന്ന് മടങ്ങി വരുവാൻ ഹുഡവല വശന്തര ഒരു കുടുംബം എന്ന ഹല്ലേലുയ ഒരു ദർശനത്തിലേക്ക് മടങ്ങി വരുവാൻ ഹുഡവ ശന്തര അത് കുഞ്ഞുങ്ങളിലേക്ക് വാവരിപ്പാൻ ഹുഡവ ശന്തര ഹല്ലേലുയ hallelujah stotram i don't know hallelujah i was just obedient to god hallelujah and i shared this message it may be uh, boring because it is 2000 years old i mean just love of god love of god you have been hearing but we never talk about love we only talk about the vertical pillar that is the from god loves us that we all talk am i loving to others and every eyes closed i just want to ask you today 
if you are convicted this evening, if you want to just submit and raise your hand, I want to pray for you. Every youth, every sister, every brother, if you convicted that I, I, I had so much love when I came into faith, but as years went by, my love has turned cold. I have turned face away from many things. I am hurt. This evening, Jesus, come into my heart and heal me. Let the Holy Spirit once again make you whole. Every brokenness would all over shatter. If Jesus called Judas his friend, and Peter, he told, my friend, have breakfast. He went searching for him, and he was able to trust him with the church. We could never trust some person who denies us, but Jesus took risk and committed to Peter to continue the ministry, the keys of everything. Hallelujah. We all know that. Can we trust once again our fellow believers? Once again, can we heal our hearts? Lord, I submit to you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you want to really say that you want to submit, there is for, you need forgiveness. Let's ask God. God, Jesus, come into and Lord, minister to me. Let the love of God hover over me. Let the Holy Spirit hover over me. Only God knows what is broken, what is hurting, what is the wall that the enemy has created in our life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us submit to his care. He alone can make us whole. There is nothing of this world. Nobody can fix us. Only God can fix us in our life. Hallelujah. Let us surrender. It is a fasting prayer. Hallelujah. The pastor will come over and